our main celebrant. I see is Father Enrique, and he is being assisted by Deacon Bob. Let us joyfully celebrate this Mass by singing together the hymn, Seek Ye First on the Overhead. Thank you. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. I am very glad to be here, to be part of this community. And today, the Lord asked to Solomon, ask anything. And today we want to ask to the Lord for our needs, and also to have, to have a good heart to love Him and worship Him. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the source of all wisdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the treasure of our hearts. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, at the end of time, you will separate the wicked from the righteous. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. We offer this Mass in honor and intentions of Bill Everhart. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide. We may use the good things that pass in such a way as a whole fast even now to those that ever endure through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O Lord, that my part is to keep your words. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Lord, I love your commands. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. For I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward, every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus, it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand these things? They replied, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the gospel of of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If God came to you in a dream and said to you, Ask anything of me, and I will give it to you, how would you respond? Would you have asked for a map, a sun treasure, filled with gold and fine pearls, a mansion on the beach, and a fame fortune? In today's the first reading in the first book of Kings, John Solomon was asked in a dream by God the same question. Ask anything of me and I will give give to you. How did Solomon respond? He asked for an understanding heart. To understand the beauty of Solomon's response, we must look at who Solomon was. Solomon was a prince. He was a son of King David and Bathsheba. His parents' relationship started off poorly when King David saw Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, batting on his neighbor's rooftop. King David called upon Bathsheba to come to his palace, and she soon became pregnant. Wanting to cover up the pregnancy, King David ordered Bathsheba's husband Uriah to return home from the battlefield so he could be with his wife. Uriah was such an honorable man that he slept on the porch of his home rather than with his wife because he knew 
His men were out fighting in battle. Infuriated, King David sent Uriah to the front lines of the battle where he was killed. In a nutshell, King David, the father of Solomon, was an adulterer, a liar, a thief, and a murderer. Solomon came from a dysfunctional home of great wealth and was heir to the throne so he had access to almost anything he wanted. Solomon could have asked God for anything, but he asked for something he could not get from his dad, his palace servants of his world. Solomon realized the thing that he was missing was a good heart. God granted Solomon his wish and exclaimed, I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been any one like you up to now and after you there will come no one to your equal. When our desires are God's desires, He blesses us beyond our wildest dreams. If God came to you in a dream tonight and said, Ask anything of me and I will give it to you, how will you respond? My hope is that you would not ask for a treasure map, something you can purchase at the mall, or something that will be you that will be left behind after you die. Rather, I hope you will ask for a good heart. God will give us the desire of our hearts, and then some when our desires match his desires. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure built in a, fa in a field which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells everything he has and buys that field again. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls, when he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and this buys it. I have always thought that the hidden treasure and the fine pearls refers to heaven. I thought that I thought I had to sell everything in my life to purchase heaven. This is a common interpretation of this scripture and can help us to grow in virtue. However, in prayer, the Lord revealed to me another way to, be the, to view this passage. You and I are the treasures. We are the fine pearls. We do not have the ability to purchase heaven because Jesus has already purchased it for us. Let him let this sink in. You are Jesus' treasure. You are Jesus' finest pearl. Jesus loves you. His unique creation. There is no one else like you on the planet. If Jesus had a wallet, your picture will be in it. If the Holy Family had a refrigerator, you picture it will be also taped to it. You are his beloved son or his beloved daughter with whom he is well pleased. With joy and unconditional love, Jesus sold everything to purchase you. He gave his life so that you can have a VIP ticket into God's hall of fame. You are God's treasure. I want to mention something that Deacon Bob told me before Mass, and I want to relate with this, especially with these readings today. He told me that a couple that are visiting today, today to us, they finish the honeymoon and they are here present. And I was thinking, 
about the same thing. They try to find the pearls, they want to find the treasure, they want to find to have a good heart. And this is the practical way everybody we are here, even in the middle of this pandemic, we are here try to find what is the most important. We try to ask to the Lord to have a good heart. Sorry, my English is not very well. And I ask all, all, every day to the Lord, please help me to improve my accent reduction. Help me also to have better communication with my community. But the first thing that I ask to the Lord always is, give my good heart to love them, take care about them, protect them, help me to be one with them and go with all of them in this way, in this path, in this world and go together to heaven. I think the most important thing that we need to share with others is to have a good heart and this only we can receive from God. If we receive a good heart, an understanding heart to love others, we can be uh, followers of Jesus Christ. We can be a disciples of Jesus Christ to love others in the way that Jesus loved us. We need to ask this every day and to be part of this wonderful community. Deacon Bob also hears me. Yeah, I am already set up my myself here in this community. I say, I love this community. When the bishop hears me, he gave me two choices. One is in the morning and one other one was here. I say, Bishop, I go anywhere you ask me. But you ask me now, what do you prefer? I prefer go with Council of Lost community because I work with them and I see this a beautiful community and also they help me a lot to improve in many ways as a person, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, but especially to be a priest and to serve them. And today, I think all of us, we are here because we want to have the heart of Jesus. I love the image of the sacred heart of Jesus. It's a beautiful image. And I think all of us, we have the same opportunity to have the heart of Jesus because we are all of us up as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. Please, we need to pray for that. Ask to the Lord to have an understanding heart, a heart as Jesus Christ. We say a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father in all the ages. God from God, light from light, through God from true God, through God the not slain, consubstantial with the Father. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and arose again in the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will not have end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with whom the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
Like Martha, Sister Mary, we come before God with humble hearts. Our response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Johnson, and all the pastors who lead the church, we, to be strengthened in spirit and body, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in, in your mercy, mercy hear our, our prayer. prayer. For wise leaders and brave public servants, working patiently for peace in a turbulent world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who work in difficult, unjust conditions, seeking fair wages and safe environment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who care for the sick and the dying, showing the Lord's love in their daily actions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the children of our parish community, encouraging adults how to trust in God's mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our missionary sisters of divine spirit in Maikau, Colombia, and the communities that they served, that they'll be free and healed of COVID-19, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the dead, especially Carl Omer, who passed away this week, will know the treasures that await them in the kingdom of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember Dale Eberhardt, whose intention we honor at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you offer eternal joy and freedom. Grant what we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Accept, O oh Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift to your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen stage, and by his suffering, cancelled out our sins, and his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise and glow, and without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fun of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and one more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring health to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her espoused, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through healing with healing in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As the Savior command and fall by the teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gradually grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, may peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gradually grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to you shame my Lord, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Tierra Spray. The 50th anniversary celebration of Corpus Christi, Our Lady of Carter Lake, will be on Saturday, September the 12th at 10 a.m. Bishop William Jonesom has confirmed that he will preside over the Golden Jubilee Mass at Carter Lake. More details will follow. Father Tom will be on retreat next week, and for any pastoral needs, please contact Father Enrique at the parish office. Father Tom appreciates your prayers for him during his time. As a reminder, in order to provide for an orderly exit and to maintain social distancing, we ask you to remain in your pews after Mass has ended until directed by, to exit by the hospitality minister. After the priest and deacon have processed out, the hospitality ministers will direct the clearing of the church from the back of the church to the front. Thank you very much for your understanding and cooperation. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memory of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation to Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to say thank you, especially all of you. We are present here and then worship the Lord and ask for understanding her and love her to Jesus Christ and also the ministry ministers or ministry of the hospitality thank you for your service here the lectors especially the scream I appreciate a lot and our musician Deacon Bob thank you for your great service to the church especially in this community and thank you for the couple they stopped here today after they finished the honeymoon and to us to the Lord to have a beautiful heart. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Be to God. Oh